Coach, I'm, getting, I'm interested in your thoughts on this. Uh, there's record number attendance in, in women's sports. There's WNBA expansion coming. Uh, we're seeing record numbers in TV viewing. You guys are opening the season in Paris. Is it safe to say that women's basketball, whether it be WNBA or college, we are in the midst of a kind of a golden era for it? Um, I just answered this question on uh, series XM. Um, and I, I, I think it's, it's bittersweet. I think we, we missed a big portion of it. And I think now we're in a place where, where there's, not enough, there's not enough network competition to, to display everything that our game is, is giving us. Because it's, I mean, the, the players are better, coaching is better, there are more stories to be told. There's just not enough outlets for us to do that. Um, but we're at a, we're in a place where we're, you're busting at the seams. We we need we need more places to televise our games. We need more places to um, story tell about our game. Um, and it's a, it's a good thing, but I, I just don't want us to miss out on any more opportunities for us to continue to expand. Uh, Cora Hall for the Greenville News. Um, a lot of people's roles are expanding or just changing this year, especially, you know, in particular, Bree Hall said she focused a lot on, on leadership. Um, is there anything that stood out to you about her development in that area or anything that you try to do to kind of help her um, be ready to take on her role this season? Um, I mean, it's, it's learning for, for, for Bree. Um, Bree is, I mean, she's a junior now, so you, you know, she should understand you know what it is to take on a leadership role because she had so many, so many great leaders um, that spent her first two years in in college. Um, I, whether she's a leader or not, I want her to be able to be on every day in practice. And if trying to be a leader takes away from that, then I want her to just be on, to to handle the the the, the heavy load of going like every rep instead of every third rep and being good at that and being consistent at um, playing both sides of the basketball. But she's trying, you know, she's really trying to be a little more vocal. She's trying to take on that heavy load. Um, and she's doing a great job of balancing it right now, but we, we haven't played any games and we know that mentally it's gonna take a toll. Like what's gonna happen if she has a bad game or two bad games? Um, consecutive bad games. So that's where you'll see where she is in her progress, but we are, we are aware. We are aware and we want her, her mind right. We want her, you know, we want her body right. We want her in a good place where she can, she can excel. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, this is the first time in a couple years that y'all have not been number one in the preseason polls. We're um, not. That's what I hear. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> how does that change the mindset of the team? And then also, where do you see the team at? Do you feel like they're still contenders, or do you feel like it's a rebuild? Um, I mean, I, I approach it the same way. And whether we're in 1, 10, 12, not ranked, um, because um, – it's just a prediction, like it really is a prediction by by people who I hope they study the game. Um, I mean, it's not a rebuild. It's not a rebuild um, for us because we, we're very talented. Like we got talent on our team. We just lack a little bit of game day experience. Um, I mean, half of our roster, you know, have, have played in some high level basketball. We just have to up their experience, and we got to create that and assimilate that in practices. Um, so when the games come, it's, it's more natural for them. Um, we could not put them in a we could not put them in a better situation um, because of the players that we had in place. Um, so we would have liked to experience some of them having a little bit more experience being in the starting lineup, but we were just that you know they couldn't break into it. Um, but I'm excited. Like I'm excited for this team. We're in a position where we're not the hunted. We're hunting, and that's not a bad place to be. Hi, 
Hi, Coach. Kerry Osep, NBC 13 here in Birmingham. First question I want to ask you is just who's having more fun in the offseason, just <laughs> seeing you out at the Phillies game and then obviously at the WNBA Finals? And just how cool is that to, you know, still get these opportunities to experience the love of the game as a fan in those two capacities? Number two, um, just to piggyback on the growth of women's basketball, when you see what tangible things can happen first and foremost to add to the growth, I mean, you know better than anybody the slow process of growing something. What do you think can happen in these next few years that you feel like needs to happen for the game? Okay. And also go Diamondbacks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, well, we're going we're gonna to take the World Series on back to Philadelphia. That's one. <laughs> um, I, you know, the first part was I, I'm, en I'm enjoying, like, you know, anytime you can break into a, a major league playoff game and they think to bring in a, a women's basketball coach, I think it's truly special. I think it's people are recognizing um, the power of our game and the people that are in our game. Um, so that's cool to be in the WNBA finals. I, I got a chance to go to game three and game four um, because I never got a chance to see any of our players play in the finals. And we had a, a break in the schedule uh, for me to do that. And then our, you know, our, our people at South Carolina allowed me to get there and, and back to come here today. You know, I, I think it's really important that we're, we're present in our players' lives. They've given so much to our universities and our athletics departments and our programs that if they're in that position, and you don't get in that position very often to be in the WNBA Finals, we should be present. Um, um, but to be there to see Elena coach, you know, get our WNBA championship to see Asia win our WNBA championship. Um, it's surreal because it's 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 what you want. Like it's your kids are able to check off a goal in in life, and you're you're there. You're seeing it happen in real time. So that that's a pretty cool experience. Um, and then tangible, something tangible that could happen with, within our game. That we, to help expand it. Um, I don't know if this is, well, it is tangible. We need, we need competition. We need, we need network competitions. And I, I don't say this to, you know, I don't say this to, you know, to, to shun ESPN because ESPN has been our outlet. ESPN has given us, we have arrived on that network. Um, um, but they need competition. They need competition or else they're going to give us what they think we should have and you know and and that's it when i i do think we're we're worth a, a lot more than what's on the table right now like we're worth a lot more but other networks are full like we need we need big networks and making room for women's basketball so that would probably be the tangible thing that needs to happen in order for us to continue to keep up with the growth of our game Uh, Theodore Fernandez, the Crimson White. Um, since you took over at South Carolina, you guys have a record of 21 and 0 against the Crimson Tide, um, and quite frankly, zero of those games have been within single digits. <laughs> <laughs> you look at um, the turnaround at Alabama; they've made two out of the past three tournaments, 21 seasons. Um, what do you think? Uh, what would you credit to the relative success the Tide have had, and what do you think the next step for that program is to try and compete? on yeah. the level of a school like South Carolina? Um, it's Chrissy Curry. I mean, she's, she's done an amazing job. She puts herself in the position um, to win basketball games. And you, you, you say that, but they were hard-fought games, like, you know, a possession or two um, in the fourth quarter. Um, they've, we've won, but we, we didn't walk away saying, um, well, we walked away saying that was tough, like, always there, or at our place, um, you know, I, I, it's, it all comes down to recruiting. It all comes down to getting talented players. But even when, and, I, and I'm not saying she didn't have the talent, even, even if she wasn't as talented as our team, she gave us a run, always. Very hard scout, um, always putting us back on our heels. I think the style of play is great. You know, it's just how we, 
how we rose up is we just got better players and better players and better players. And, and once you get one or two, people are going to want to play with those one and two, and then you get better and you move up, you move up the rankings. Hi, Coach. Ashley Woods with the Crimson White. Uh, Bree earlier talked about you know Camilla's development as a leader. What have you seen from her in the preseason so far? How has she developed as a leader? Um, I mean, you hear Camilla. Like, you didn't hear her in the past two years that she's been with us. Like, she's communicative. Um, she's energetic. I think she's playing with the with the a zest of wanting to dominate. And that's what we want. We want we want you to understand that. And domination to, is a process that that everybody has to go through it if that's what they want. And you do have to want it. Like we can't we see her we see her stature, we see her presence, we see her ability, but until she takes that step of wanting it, um that's when it happens, and, and that's what she wants. Because I, I, she's very, very competitive. Um, didn't say a whole lot, but now she's saying a whole lot because there's a big void left um, with our graduation um, of uh, last, year's, last year's team. Um, and that's what you want to see. You don't want to force them to do it. We want them, she knows who's next up. And now she's, you know, she's embracing that role for us. Peyton Tice with the state newspaper. Um, talking to, to Tahina earlier, she talked about, you know, the way to get on the court was by playing defense, and that's something that you've stressed with her a lot. How have you seen her grow in that since she arrived on campus, and maybe what else have you seen from her that surprised you? Um, I mean, we call it Pow Pow. So Pow Pow, um, I mean, we, I've, I watched her during the recruiting process, although we didn't recruit her. Um, I watched, I mean, I've seen her, we, we played against them in the Bahamas, I believe. I don't think she played in that game, no. Um, and then we've watched her when we started, you know, when she went into the transfer portal. We watched her, her games and her clips. Um, without a doubt, she can, she can score the basketball. You know, my, my question mark was, will she be a willing defender? And that was my question mark when we decided to get in the race of, of recruiting her, where we saw some of the things that she needed for where she's trying to go. Like I sat in front of, you know, 16,000 people watching the, the Aces and the Liberty. <laughs> that game came down to defense, came down to defense. So you're going to have to play it at our level. And if you're going to go to the next level, you're going to have to have a, a, a high level commitment to it. Um, and she's committed to it. I mean, she's come a long way. Like, I mean, she sticks her nose in there. She takes charges. Um, she's playing angles a lot better. I mean, she's a willing participant in, in giving it up on the defensive side of the ball. And um, what's, I mean, nothing really surprises me. What, what, what we recruited her for and to be, she's been that. She's been that. She's got a great voice. She's got a great command of our of our basketball team. I mean, she and Raven play off each other extremely well. And I think of, you know, I think of, uh, and I, I don't think, I think they work well together. They can work well independent of each other. Both of them will, will, will be lead guards for us. I mean, I don't think I've ever had two like lead guards of this caliber on, on our basketball team and, and, and all of my years of coaching. You've got some really impressive freshmen coming in, um, as well as also Sakima out of um, JUCO. Can you speak to you know who of those have kind of stood out to you? And I know there's also some homegrown talent. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they 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 all look like freshmen. Um, some of them look great at times, and then. Other times they look like a penny with a hole in it, but that's that's their process. Um, I, I will start with uh, Malaysia Fuwali. I think she's a generational talent. I do, I do, because generational to me is being able to do things that no other no other people can do. Like she does things that I haven't seen 
a women's basketball player do. The moves that she makes, the shiftiness, um, her ability to shoot the long, long ball, get to the basket at will. Um, but I also have seen her, I mean, she's very, very coachable. She wants to be great. Um, but we have to teach her greatness as a process. It's, a, it's you're working on it a, um, daily. Um, and she really understands that, so she's taking a liking to that. Um, Tessa Johnson, oh my, she can flat out shoot the basketball. She can flat out shoot. And the rest of her is trying to, trying to, trying to rid herself of, uh, you know, her high school ways, because the, the pace is quicker. You know, her passes are slower. It's their high school mode, so we gotta. We always say high school dropout, high school dropout. We want you to drop those those high school habits, um, but that's a process for her, you know. And I do think Tessa needs to be a little bit more selfish in scoring the basketball because she she can do that because um, some of her best defense is going to be her ability to put the ball in the hole. Um, who else we have? Uh, Sanaya Ja. Athletically gifted, elite athlete, um, unafraid to mix it up, great offensive rebounder, um, great defender, willing to mix it up. Um, so she's going she's gonna to make me play her. Like, she's going to make me play her well, by, by how she approaches practice every day. And then Sakima. Um, Sakima is 6'6". Six, six, um, Utilizes her height in, in a great way. Really has a great understanding of of how we want to play. Like if I if, if we give an instruction of how we want to play, plays it to a T. And that's what you want. Very very coachable. Great understanding of the game. Um, should should help us. We only have 11 players, so everybody everybody's gonna get an opportunity to play. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, thank you so much.